better fly than to tie at this time of night than when I would normally be tying it on in the river in the summertime here in the UK. Uh, this is a sherry spinner pattern and one that I do awfully well on uh, each summer uh, in July and August uh, during our late evenings. Um, you wait to the bitter end and the last 15 minutes of daylight when the big trout come out to rise. This is the fly that usually finds its success. Uh, we've altered thread slightly. We've gone for the Semperfly uh, wax thread in 12O and this is an orange colour. Um, very simply because this adds a little bit of colour to the fly that we're tying. Start our thread and take it all the way back down. Uh, this is on the Partridge SLD. Uh, so size 14, I tie these all the way down to a 20. And take it back, find our Cop de Leon, and we want to take four fibers. So it doesn't matter how many fibers you take as long as they're an even number, uh, because we're going to split the fibers. tie these you want them almost a body and a half long so being a spinner pattern these are the adults coming back to lay their eggs their tails are much longer than the duns so we therefore as fly tires have to represent that stage so trim that out now, I'm going to take some of my 18 nano silk, pull a section off. Have it, take my thread to where tail starts. Take this section of nano silk around the bend of the hook, and now if you pull the tail up you'll find the natural divide in how you tied it in take that thread that you've wrapped around the hook up and through the divide so half the tail is on one side and half on the other and it will look a bit awkward at first but drop your thread over and start to take it back. And you'll find now that those fibers are split. So you've got two on one side, two on the other. Okay. Got a slightly crooked one, but that's not a bad thing. Um, and that's how the natural fly dives on the water, because so they'll die with that split tail showing. And I feel if you can replicate that, you're putting your fly in fairly good instead of being eaten. Right, trim the excess of that off. So you can leave that orange body that you've built up just at the back area here, and then start your body just a short way in front and here I've got uh, that super fine dubbing again uh, in the color rust and we'll pop that up and again and we've tried to build a slight taper going forward So if you've got too much dubbing, just pull some out. And like with many hackled flies, you want to leave yourself plenty of room at the front. And this time, so I've got some of the Semperfly potty yarn again, uh, perfect posting material. Um, but this time we're going to use it slightly differently. So 
I've taken my thread a little bit further forward than the body we've made at the moment. Use the weight of that bobbin to tie it on in place. And generally I'll do this with the wing on the left hand side of the fly. So get it stuck out right. So many spinner patterns will have the crucifix style wing. Uh, this particular one I'm going to cut out the right hand side and just have a single wing. Um, it looks a bit like a crippled spinner um, which makes the mockery of the fact that I've split the tails um, but it seems really effective having just the one wing so I'll turn it that way to just have one wing on one side and none on the other and a bit of a sighter for you in the low light uh, but generally it's a, a guessing game when you've got this fly on um, if you think you've seen a fish rise somewhere near it, strike, uh, because nine times out of ten it probably has had it. Heckle-wise, you want to be pairing them up against the shank of the hook, and you want the hackle to be roughly the same length as the body. And like many of them, prepare it by removing those lower fibers and trapping that in on top, rock it backwards and forwards to get it in position. You don't need to worry too much about this particular hackle. It seems to be that the messier it is, the more effective the fly is. Which for any of you neat fly tires out there, um, it's your idea of hell. But if it means that you're catching fish, it's worth a try, definitely. So we've got that. I haven't put a, threat, a dubbing base down. Um, you can in this size. Um, but if you were tying them much smaller than this, um, you wouldn't necessarily want too many, too much bulk up around there. So crowbar two turns. Behind, a second in front, and take the thread up. So don't worry if you trap any fibers on this because it seems to be that the messy version of this particular fly is the effective one. So get your locking turns in front. In with the scissors and ease that out. Make sure your wing sat roughly where you want it to. Take your whip finish tool and once, twice, and nip out your thread. Now, all you've got left to do is you've got this wing here, and you want to cut it to the same length as your hackle. And that's your wing in plates. And if you really want to want to make the flight sit a bit lower in the water, you can take out some of the under side of this hackle and that will help it sit the correct way every time. And that's a really effective late evening fly for the midsummer. Ready, you've got the spinner coming back, laying eggs on the water.